them to do whatever the flesh wants to do and forget about the Spirit of God, they oppress what's in them. And then they grieve the Holy Spirit. Quench. You know, you quench the Holy Spirit out of your life. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Let me know what your carnal weapons are. Your mouth. And it could get a little radical too. You know what I'm saying? It could be your hand. And it could be your foot. You ever seen some people, you just like to kick them in, but we won't go there. Amen. I'm just telling you the truth. Amen. You ever have somebody just get on your last nerve and you'd like to just go up and. Uh, amen. And sometimes, like I said, there's going to be some situations that rises up that make it really tough. But how many know how you handle things? Shows how much Christ you got. Amen. See, a lot of times people are, oh God, I want more of you, Lord. I want more of your glory, Lord. Then all of a sudden a trial comes. Amen. In the trial. Then the flesh means more than the glory does. Yes, sir. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> pulling down of strongholds, to the pulling down of strongholds. Guess how you can pull down strongholds? You know what that's talking about? It's talking about prayer. Pray? Man, I'll tell you what, families need strongholds pulled down in their lives now, don't they? Amen? Because I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say it because the demonic warfare, come on, we're going to go there, amen? The demonic warfare has intensified. So I think it's time that the children of God arise and shine. For the light has, you're not with me, Michael. It's time that we walk in the light as he is in the light. But the Bible says if you say you walk in the light and walk in darkness, you lie and do not the truth. Ooh, man. man, everybody's excited about that rise and shine, but this next scripture kind of, mm, almost like putting a needle in a ball just went flat. And it's kind of like, you know, people like some scriptures that, man, that hops me up. But man, when it comes when it corrects the flesh, it's like, Truthfully, amen, I found that out. Amen. And a lot of times people will read the Bible, but when, it, when it's, they see things that begins to convict them, well, just, it's easier just to lay the Bible down, let it gather dust, than it is to open it and let it speak to us. Because God's Word will talk to you. Amen. 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 Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience. Let me show you this. You know what this is talking about? When those thoughts come in your mind, you got to be ready for it. Oh, I'm not going to speak that. Because if I do this, I'll be obedient to God. Man, I've seen some, man, some people who just like, well, you know me. I just tell them what I think. I thought, do you know where you're at with God? Amen. Seriously. Amen. Amen. Verse 7. When your obedience is fulfilled, do you look on things after the outward appearance? Remember what we did with the suitcases? We had three suitcases, and there was a big one and a medium size, a little one. I said, which one do you think is the heaviest? The biggest one? And it wasn't. It was a setup. Do you not realize that's exactly what Satan does sometimes? He gets us to judge things after the appearance. And then if you ain't careful, if you ain't asking God about it, what happens? You get out of obedience with God, and you just get in the flesh and start giving your opinion how you feel about it, what you think. Amen. Amen. If any man trust to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so are we Christ. You ever been around some people, man, they think they're so perfect, they Jesus himself. Come on, we're going to go there for a minute, and they can judge everybody. That's what Paul's talking about here. Amen. I believe this, you don't have to tell people. People will see it by how you handle things and your actions. Okay, think about this. Thoughts stir up emotions. Then we get lost in emotions. 
Think about that for a minute. Thoughts stir up emotions. You ever seen people, man, the lottery numbers start going up, and all of a sudden they start thinking, man, if I could win, oh, my God, if I could win, man, I would. Just little things, just, and they even want, ain't bought a ticket yet. I ain't even bought a ticket yet, and their emotions are so high running away with them that they can almost feel it like they, they got their name on the ticket. I'm trying to show you how Satan plays with emotions. And why is it we can hear something from somebody else, at least a little thing, man, our emotions will. If it's something we didn't want to happen, your emotions will sell out the roof. Amen. Amen. Why do you think it says be slow to speak? Man, sometimes that's hard, is it not? Yes, amen. Especially when you're tired and aggravated, amen. something happens. Next thing you know, your mouth is open before it should have. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Uh, we've all been there. Some of you act like you're all innocent. You don't know what I'm talking about. But we've all been there sometime or another. Amen. This will help us if we'll listen to it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> swift to hear. Slow to speak. Swift to hear. Yeah. Amen. You ever, uh, oh Lord, you really want me to go there? For real. You ever been around people, you know, I learned a long time ago sometimes when people's trying to talk, you just got to be quiet and listen to them. Yeah. And sometimes there's people that needs to talk, but the one the one's supposed to be doing the listening wanting to do all the talking instead of the, you know, with me, instead of the listening, amen? Yeah. And they want to tell you all about them, really the one that's hurting really can't. Do you realize the people that we could help if we would just walk in obedience to Christ? Because I'm going to tell you this. There's times Christ is like, shut up, son. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Come on. You ever have God tell you shut up? Yes, oh, God's a gentleman. He wouldn't do that. Oh, really? Yeah, he is a gentleman. But he will tell you to shut up sometimes if you'll listen. Amen. You know, there's a scripture that says study to be quiet. Oh, this this is I know this ain't popular. You know what studying to be quiet is? No, some people talk so much they can't hear God. Oh, oh. we going there. Uh, we going there, amen. amen. You know what? I found the best thing you do is get some quiet time with God, and that's when you can really begin to hear God. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. But it goes on saying not offer the sacrifice of fools. Because you know what fools do? They run their mouths. Amen. We can learn more by listening than we can talking. Amen? Wow. Okay. Thoughts stir up emotions. Then we get lost in emotions. Go to Philippians 4 and 8. And more or less what I'm telling you is trying to tell you how to keep from packing baggage around. <coughs> remember the bricks? I remember when they said, Amen? Because the devil, like the accuser of the brother, likes to remember, make you remember things that you didn't even forgive people for, and he'll bring them back up. Amen. 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 You ever forgive somebody for something and they get on your nerve again? You know, mm, and they say, "Remember what they done? They done this. They done that." Or you will be somebody else. Well, you remember what they done? They done this, and they said, uh, yeah. "Well, somebody told me that they." And then you're you're letting all that jump. You're listening to. It. You gotta be careful who you listen to. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, Philippians four and eight says this. Finally, brother, whatsoever things are true. Now let me show you this. Why is it? And it goes on to say, whatsoever things are true, it's tell you to think on. But listen to this for a minute. Why is it some people they'll hear things and whether it's lie or true, they'll think on it. Come on, Satan will use things. He'll use people. You ever have people lie to you about people? Yeah. And they even in the church. Yeah. Mm, you're not with me, amen. Some people just like gossip. Amen. Amen. You don't realize this? The Bible says he that meddles with another man's strife is like the man that takes a dog by the ears. I think I quoted that here a while back. Amen. I'm like this. I really don't want to hear all the junk. Amen. 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 Are you with me? So if you let somebody else talking to you, you ought, to, you ought to be careful what you listen to. But if, if it, what if it's a lie and you've thought on it, you've watered on it, you went to bed with it, angry, remember? 
Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. And you've laid there and wallowed in that strife and anger. And you get up the next morning mad at everybody else. There's Christian people that live their life this way. And they're living to defeat it. Amen? Amen. Amen. What sort of things are honest? What sort of things are just? What sort of things are pure? What sort of things are lovely? What sort of things of good report? If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Amen. And I, I mean, all of us hate to get a bad report from the doctor. But you ever you notice sometimes when people get a report, and some reports don't even have to be that bad. It's like, oh, man, oh, really? There's people dying with cancer, and you're going on by an ingrown toenail. <laughs> I'm being real with you. It's almost like there's, there's sympathy hunters. Uh huh. Come on, let's go there. Amen? Amen. And sometimes people just, they think on it, they get themselves down in this prison of self-pity. And their emotions are running away, and they don't care about nobody but Self. Amen? Amen. Well, let's back up to verse 6 and read this. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. And look what this says. And the peace of God. And the peace. Come on. See, here's the problem. A lot of people don't have peace. Yeah. Now, how can I expect to have peace if I live double-minded? And I play on other people's emotions. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm playing this and that. And you know, and then I wonder why I ain't got no peace. And there's people that live this way. And they wonder why they ain't got no peace. Amen. It'll tell you how to get peace right in the Word of God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. And it's kind of like this, even though you hear a bad report, you go, oh, well, God's got it. Mm -hmm. And some people mad because you got your peace, and they playing games. Uh, oh. One thing I have found out, they can't take your peace. They can't Amen. take your joy Amen. away from you. Amen. And another thing, they can't take the anointing out of your life that God's put there. Amen. But I think about all the fiery darts that Satan tries sometimes for us to lose, or let's say this, for us to operate in the works of the flesh instead of the fruits of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, gentleness, long-suffering. Against such there is no law. Amen. So it tells us, it tells us right here, she'll keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Satan will get in your mind with thoughts and trouble you so much. You won't know whether where it's up or whether it's down. If you're going left, you're going right, or what the next step is you should take. Amen? Amen. So let's say this. Training yourself to think. God's way. Now think about this. Some people has lived their lives to the point it's almost they got to go through a whole new training to learn to speak and think the way God wants us to speak and think. And I'm just going to say this. Oh Lord, are you serious? You know, I, I'll never say a word, but when you talk to certain people about certain places and they tell you that, well, man, this stuff ain't taught. And these elders in the church just making any kind of comment they want to make about other people. Now, I'm going to tell you, it's sad when young people can see what's going on in the church and nobody else seems to take notice that everything's just all messed up. It's not how God would have it to be. But let me tell you this. Guess what happens to the anointing? See, you can have your flesh church. Oh, man, it's getting real quiet. I said you can have a flesh church. Amen? We should desire to have a spirit church. Amen? Full of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. But we've all got choices. If we override what God's Word says, how to conduct ourselves, guess what happens? The 